Hello and welcome to the Heart of England Speakers podcast. My name is Pierre and I'm your host. Uh, please join us currently online the first and third Tuesday of the month at 7.30. For all details, please go to our website, heartspeakers.org.uk. Today, he's finally here. We have our president of Heart of England Speakers Club. Say hello to Rich. Hello, Rich. Hello, Pierre. How are you doing? I am well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I must tell everybody listening and watching that uh, Pierre is indeed PR Pierre because he's been a very wonderful VP PR this year. Right, so thank you, you, for that. You, if you ever see him, just say PR Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that. And I'll, uh, I'll keep that for future reference, I think. <laughs> All right. So, first things first, Rich, you're as they say, old Silhillian, not because you're old, but that your family has been here for a while, if I understand. Yes, um, and I am old, uh, but I am also a Silhillian. Yeah, um, if you're born and bred in Solihull, you are a Silhillian. Um, where Silhillian came, comes from, I'm not sure, but sure because Solihull was Soily Hill. So when you go up the hill towards the St. Alfred Church, that used to be called Soily Hill. And over the years, it became Solihull. And the people who live there are Silhillians. And I'm a double Silhillian because I went to Surrey Hall School as well. As nice. Luke and uh, Julia and Rebecca, a few, a few other people from the club. Uh, so, yeah, so Silhillians is actually my, my sort of home, as it were. And Silhillians, of course, is where we meet every first and third Tuesday. I have been here for, I've uh, lived here for um, seven years now. And I had no idea it was called the. Uh, I mean, the Soily Hill. Soily Hill. No Hill. Hill. There you go. I'm educating you as well. But yeah. no, my my mum is born and bred uh, in from Moor Hall Green, so Birmingham generally. Mm -hmm. And my dad came from Derby, oh, and they, okay. they met. And um, yeah, my my yeah. So my dad had a sort of Derby slant, and he took me to my first football game, which was Derby against Birmingham City, and Birmingham City won. And I took the Derby County scarf off that he gave me to start with and say, so can I have a blue and white one instead? So you can't escape where you come from. I see that. <laughs> so, right, so where did you, uh, what did you study at uni then? I did a degree in uh, design, specializing in film and television, which was good fun. That was at Staffordshire University. And basically we learned how to cut things together. It was really quite basic because all we could afford was uh, video VHS and Umatic, as it was called, um, to shoot anything on film was was an, an expensive luxury. But also, of course, we didn't have the digital age then, so so every shot counted, which actually was a really good discipline to learn at that point. And it also started me on what eventually came to uh, or has continued with Toastmasters, of learning how to write and how to just put a little something together, start, middle, and end every time. That was really interesting. So I'm still working in that. I still do lots of television. I still do bits of advertising. And I've had, you know, 30 odd years of working in TV, which has been really good fun. What was the, what was your best piece of television, you think? Anything we would have seen? Uh, yeah, we won a, an RTS award, a Royal Television Society award for the BBC One documentary. Uh, what was it called in the end? Um, it was about the Birmingham pub bombs of 1974. Uh, 40 years on, I can't remember what the full title is now. However, we won for that. And it was really, it was good. We didn't point any fingers. There was nothing um, accusational or anything. It was really how Birmingham, what happened on the night when 22 odd people were killed in, a, in two pub bombs and how the communities have built themselves up since, to, since then. So it was a really interesting thing we did. I got to interview some of the the Birmingham Six, uh, not directly myself, but helped set the whole thing up and, and do a lot, set a lot of a lot of it up, and, and that was really good fun. And that was working with a company called BFM in Birmingham under Maggie Fogarty, and that was probably the most the proudest thing I've done, I must say. 
Uh, you'd have seen Football Italia probably and Rugby Special and programs like that that I was involved in many years ago. So it's been quite varied, it's been good fun. Very cool. I like the when you gave some speeches, you shared the uh, the tip you give footballers so they could stay still. <laughs> oh, that's I right. That. In Postmasters, we're trying to command a room and move, mm -hmm. use our bodies as well as everything else. But when you, and I've done it a few times, coached footballers in particular to answer questions on camera. So you've roughly got the same thing here. And what my tip is to hold your hands behind your back, which has puffs your chest out anyway. But it also keeps you still. So rather than the camera having to move around and follow you, it it, it gives it makes the cameraman's and and subsequently the editor's life a bit easier. That's a really cool trick. I like it. <laughs> All right. So now we get to your, as we call it, the Toastmasters journey. So what was the the drive for you to join in the first place? Well, it was a funny one. I, I like a lot of people. I had friends who did Toastmasters. You might remember Bernie and Anna, and they invited me. I was at the gym one night, and I said, "What do you do tonight?" And they just said, "We're going to Toastmasters." I said, "What you're making toast, or what, you know, what's going on?" And they explained it. And well, that was quite interesting. Would you like to come now? It's okay. Yeah, go and have fun. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, they were still pestering me, and I went along. They said, "You don't have to speak. Just watch." I said, oh, okay, be interesting. And of course, within that meeting, I'd stood up, answered my first table topic, hands shaking. In fact, I was clutched like this and just rooted to the spot. And I was asked a question about which politician I would like to spend a night in a tent with. Now, which was a bizarre one and a good way to throw myself into it because if I could answer that, I could answer anything. So yeah, it stuck. I really enjoyed it. We went to the Greswold, which uh, the, the, um, a lot of members watching this will remember fondly. And met you, met Rachel and Tony and Deb and all the gang. And it was really good fun. And I sort of fell in love with it pretty much straight away, I must say. The London go, or rather you control them, don't you? I think yeah, I mean, yeah. I started about four years ago. And I think you started right after I did. But yep. in the words, the great wisdom words of Ron Burgundy, things escalated quickly for you. You got into <laughs> Toastmasters really really you know full on how, how do you how do you feel i guess is my question you well, felt really strongly about it that's how i do things really it's either full on or forget it i think and uh, at least a frustration in various things i tried golf a few years ago and went from 24 down to 14 and did really well really quickly but took it way too seriously and i was turning up on the golf course just itching to do really well every time and of course you just forget how to enjoy it and what I did with Toastmasters was just ease my way in and learn the roles, learn speeches, learn how to do speeches. And it was really good fun. I, I was never a shy person. So everybody joins for different reasons. But what I could immediately see it for my work pur purposes, how I could improve presentations to the BBC or whoever it might be. Also, I had to improve my writing and just get it more succinct. And so with every, and of course, you know, you just, building confidence you group a new group of friends it's a it's a all-round pleasurable thing to do and yes i threw myself into it but i think that's the best way to do things you just throw yourself and you know then if it's the right thing for you and of course here i am about to be area director so it's obviously worked for me yes and i, and I do love it yeah, so you went uh, a year plus to be the vppr and then you ran for president mm. which and then you were elected and then 2020 happened. So how did how did it go from your end? Yes, yeah, it, well. it went very well. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I had tall stilettos to fill in, in uh, you know, after Rachel. She was wonderful. Uh, I don't think she's pretty tall. I don't think she needs stilettos. So <laughs> go on. Yeah, true. And uh, she was uh, a great inspiration to me. We worked very closely, actually, that, that year when she was president before me, and I, I learned a lot from her. So I was very confident going into it. My worry was because we're, we're expanding all the time that we would have too many members almost, and uh, COVID had already happened, so we, we were Zoom ready when I took over. Actually, so what uh, to do? Pardon? Actually, let's pause for a second. So, you know, March 2020 it was the last time we met in yes. uh, in um oh, in person yes yeah i forget how to say it but march 2020 we stopped the last meeting was in march i remember 
you take over July 1st. What, how was it? What was your thinking at that time? Because, you know, holy crap, you can't meet in person. Yeah, and uh, but all the time there was this little carrot. You know, we're going to be back live soon. We're going to be back live soon. And you probably remember we did. We were back live once in August. I think August the 18th or something to 2020. And I had been to France the last couple of weeks before that. Everything was in place. Worked very hard. All the committee pulled together really well, as you'd expect. Got everything ready for the sills. And then I had to quarantine for two weeks. So couldn't make it. So I'm... Uh, so I may still be the only president in history that not to have gone to a live meeting in their entire year. But saying that, it has been really good because it, it were different challenges this year. We had to do online contests. We had to do online educationals, whereas before we'd be at the club. So that brings new questions as well, particularly the online thing, uh, sorry, the contest thing, where you work out how to take people out into, it's a whole new technical thing, you know, Usually judges can go and stand in that corner when you're live. Here, we've got to take people out in breakout rooms and timing, keeping the whole thing flowing was quite a challenge. And Abby was contest chair the first meeting and did brilliantly. Um, and I oh, did Actually, if I may, from that point of view, how did you approach all this? Were you apprehensive? Were you feeling confident? I was saying, no, I wasn't. I never app apprehensive because I had a good team around me. And that's that's the key. I had seven people underneath me who I'd had every confidence in. And my, my word of the year was empowerment. And as long as I was giving my committee empower, uh, the power to do their role um, individually and collectively, then they could give the members the power to improve as public speakers. It was not ideal being on Zoom. And I was a little apprehensive about the fact that if it were dragged on, people would lose interest. But because we've changed things around, we've tried different things, we've kept it as fresh as we can, albeit on Zoom, then the members have stayed and it's been really good. And of course, we've, we've signed up nine to date new members as well, which is ter terrific, including a couple of people who won't make every meeting because one lives in Spain and one lives down in Milton Keynes. And uh, so they're hybrid members, ostensibly. They will get to the club at some point, of course. But that's a really exciting part as well. So even though it was not what I expected when I walked into the, in, when I put my hand up for the job, um, it, it's been really satisfying as well. That was uh, actually a huge, um, actually a, the pandemic was a kind of a boost for Toastmasters because the ability to, to learn new digital stuff and be, you could join digitally or even go to contests digitally. Obviously, before you had to travel, but I think now that travel element is, has really been removed, as you were saying. So. Yeah, there's two, it's a double-edged sword. It sure. really is nice to go to other clubs. I, I've, I've been in contests, area contests, and beyond where I've been able to go to the club uh, that's hosting it, uh, Coventry, etc. And you meet people, and that's really nice. And you're all chatty. It's, a, it's Toastmasters. Everybody's there to meet and chat and learn from each other when you're online it's a little bit more a little bit more stilted i suppose a little bit sterile in that respect but it's still good fun and you still have to learn how to deliver now in this little box rather than the stage and this of course leads on to being better at work so everybody yeah. i know through toastmasters has improved their zoom skills and team skills and can deliver presentations very comfortably at work whereas other people are still quite struggling with it to a certain extent Core so presentations, to adapt. Yes. core presentations, exactly. interviews, everything. Yeah, anything online. that's online now, yeah. And what, where it's helped as well is that we can get a lot more people trained. So as area director, I'll be um, training up the next committees throughout the clubs, throughout the area. And that is slightly easier now that we're online. So we can get everybody there and trained up. Uh, again, you're missing that one-to-one -one, meeting people you're in the same room and you get to know people a lot better a lot quicker of course when you're face to face but now we're in that adaptable position in life anyway so toastmasters has really really taken the lead in many ways other 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 things have just stood still or not moved with the times and these are the times suddenly yeah we've got zoom now we've got a hybrid option as well where we can have people at home if they've got vulnerable people or if they go on travel if they've got children that need to get to bed they can still join a meeting online even though that meeting is, is live so really why we didn't do all this many years ago it's, it, and that's right across 
every uh, pastime and all sorts of things. So yeah, it's been it's been an interesting year because we've had to adapt, we've had to keep it fresh, and and we have. I'm very proud of what we've achieved this year as a committee. We've got our 10 DCP, which is uh, what we all aim for as a club. Not every club has done that, and that's really because of the the enthusiasm of the members that's been um, encouraged and guided along by the committee. What are your main takeaways as president? What did you learn or what do you think? Oh, I didn't know that or I learned or is there, is there anything that you were not expecting or any insights well, in your position, basically? Uh, yeah, there's, there isn't any number because you don't quite know what it's going to be like when you take on president. You join the committee to start with and that that's a really good learning curve as well. And for a lot of people, they're joining the committee for the first time. They haven't been on any committee before. And so just to learn how a committee works is very interesting anyway, I, I think. Then you start learning personal things. And from as president, it's how I guided the team without really thinking about it. And it was really, it was really an enjoyable experience because I learned a lot about myself. I've always been a team player and we'll get stuck in and help, help out. And I've captained rugby teams, cricket teams that done, and I've led television productions and that type of thing, but everything's different. In this case, um, it, it's just, I learned that you don't have to tell people what to do a lot of the time, you just guide them. And as long as, as I mentioned earlier, the empowerment thing, you're giving them the confidence, then the, then they will grow as well. And I think to answer your question, the one takeaway is the joy I've seen in watching the committee grow individually, as well as collectively, of course. And everybody's taken something away. Caroline, our VPE, never, haven't done the job before. It's arguably the hardest job on the committee. VPE, um, she is responsible for those who don't know to the, putting all of the meetings together. That's not just our bi-monthly meetings, it's the contests, it's the educationals, it's all sorts of things and making sure that everything is going through TMI uh, and being logged properly. And she just took to it like that, it was wonderful. And then Abby, of course, has grown as VPM, as she did the year before. She took over halfway through and she's just taken it to new levels as well. And is now going to be our president, which is wonderful news. And uh, and so on and so forth. I could go through everybody. I won't embarrass you by saying how great you were and the fact that the socials are incredible. Those who haven't checked them out do and like and subscribe, of course. And Pierre has done a brilliant job. And that's the, that's what I take away as well. You've done that. But uh, hopefully. You know, I take pride in what you've done there because I hopefully have given you the, the ammunition to do it, basically. And it's been really, that, yeah, that, that's what it, that's to me what anybody coming onto a committee can achieve. It's leadership. You learn about yourself as a leader when you come onto the committee. And for me, that's the biggest takeaway that it has worked. And I found out things about myself that I didn't know before. Wow, really, that's uh, really good advice, actually. So now for next year, you're going to be area director, which I'm guessing is another dimension altogether. Uh, I know you had some preliminary meetings. Uh, what What's your assessment so far? Uh, it's it's going to be uh, tougher than being a president because I was looking after one club, Heart of England, and as area direct, uh, director, I will be looking after this, well, it will be six clubs. So we have Heart of England, Godiva, in Coventry, Spa, Warwick, uh, the newly chartered JLR, Jaguar Land Rover, and Siemens are hopefully going to charter in September, October. We'll see how that one goes. But yeah, so it'll be six clubs that I'm visiting that I, again, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just working alongside and guiding. And that's the important thing for any president, anyone on the committee, really, and indeed a mentor. You're just working, you're not telling them what to do, you're just guiding them to, so they can find their voice, they can find their own culture. And it's an interesting uh, group of clubs. There's some outstanding speakers amongst every club, of course. But every club can get better. And my when I, uh, when I was elected, I had to do a, a speech. Now, when I was president, my word of the year, as you might have guessed already from this, was empowerment. And as era director, my phrase of the year is evolution, not revolution. 
So as long as every club is evolving and just moving forward, which of course takes each member individually forward as well, then I'll be very happy. There's no point going crack, cracking the whip, telling people what to do, and because no, I'm not going to put my culture on them. They have to find their own voice, as it were, as a committee and as a club. And for the most part, most clubs are there, which is great to see. Excellent. So I'm guessing you'll be a distinguished Toastmaster in no time. Is that something <laughs> you? That's something you aspire to be, I guess. You know, yeah, I'm going to go for a distinguished. Uh, distinguished Toastmaster is, is on the cards for this year. Um, definitely, yeah, that's something that every club should, ha- should try and get people through as much as possible um, when I'm talking to the committee. But individually as well, it's something that we can all attain. And it's be very exciting to have that after my name, yeah. Yeah, something you are looking at as well, yeah. I'll take a little, a little more <laughs> leisure. I'll take more time, put it this way. <laughs> I've enjoyed well, my time. Yeah. My I've enjoyed my own time on the committee this year. I mean, yeah, we yeah. did really good work, especially given the circumstances. And I mean, I, I see where I started with the, you know the social, and then I see where we are now talking yeah. to each other. Something I never expected I was going to do. So, yeah, you do find a lot about yourself doing those roles, and I really encourage a people to join Toastmasters, obviously, but b if you're a, a member, you know. To, to try one of those positions because more you don't really have opportunities in life or in your even in your job to you know I'm a I don't know I'm an accountant I'm gonna try to do some PR that never happens but here you have the opportunity to do it and it's completely quote unquote risk free you just you know you try you try your best and it's fine everything will be fine yeah I think one thing that's always struck me about Toastmasters is how supportive it is. Yes. From top to bottom, the best presidents, the best committee members, the best members are all supportive. And you can, as soon as I walked in, there was a, there was a um, there was an experience within the room. Um, the likes of Mish and Tanya and Sonata, of course. Uh, a lot of people have been there for a number of years. Um, Carla has come back. She, I think, she joined Toastmasters first in two thousand. Uh, would you believe? I think she's the longest serving Toastmasters at the heart of England, even though she was at a different club than down south. But it's a, you walk in and nobody's pointing the finger and going, ah, you're not very good at this. Because we all walk in very nervously and we're trying to find our own way through public speaking. We do it for a reason. Of course, the, um, the, the benefits far outweigh just the public speaking. It goes way beyond that into leadership, into confidence, into, writing as i mentioned into listening better um but in that room we had a lot of experienced people and the first thing that struck me was the first evaluation which is how supportive it was so i've tried to keep that going for myself so every evaluation i do the recommendations are the most important part for me so like this is a really good speech fantastic what what could improve it is to try this maybe next time or have you thought about doing that or maybe just change this around in terms of the structure so i take away something every single meeting even if i haven't spoken and that's a really nice thing about toastmasters i think that's a really nice note to finish the toastmaster discussion on but there's something else i need to bring up to you some some of you may or may not know our intro music was written by our very own President Rich right here. So Rich, you're a guitarist. Please tell us about your music. Oh, gosh. Well, it's another one of my hobbies. And, uh, yeah, if I it, I work in TV, uh, which is quite an on-paper glamorous thing to do. It's not in reality, of course. And I think when I was – I've never quite grown up. That's that's the point. Nobody does. So, you know, you've, I've always been, I'm always playing sport. I'm always doing something. I'm always a, a little boy, basically, wanting to open the bat for, uh, open the batting for England or scoring the winning goal in the Euros, which is about to kick off today, uh, or scoring the winning try at Twickenham, but also playing on stage and all those sort of things. And of course, Toastmasters gives you an element of all of that. You, you've got an adrenaline rush. You've got a bit of a, um, a bit of a, uh, yeah, you've got to think about it. You've got to practice. And that's what I really like. And guitar as well. I first played first lessons when I was about 13, 14. So I've been playing a lot, many years. 
and I played in bands. Uh, I was part of a band that won Battle of the Bands a couple of years ago, which was good fun. And interestingly, my stage presence, if there was such a thing, improved post Toastmasters. I remember that in Battle of Bands final, the first couple of songs, I was just concentrating on what to play around F, G, A minor, and I was thinking, I'm not really enjoying this, let's play. So I just went, yay, and started playing and jumped around the stage and, and had a really good time, whereas everybody else was sort of just concentrating and it's very boring for a crowd. And so, yeah, I, I do it for fun, a bit like Toastmasters now, I do it, not no, Toastmasters is different, I do it for fun, I also do it to help people and to encourage and to, and, and to you know, and to give something back, which I'm doing with their director and president. With guitar, I purely, in all honesty, do it for fun. So writing a song for you, for example, was was just pleasure. It was really good fun to sit down and, with a blank page, like Toastmaster's speech, and just start, okay, what sort of thing might be needed for Pierre's podcast? Um, I thought I'd go for a jazzy feel. Felt it out. It took me no, not that long to write it, but hey, presto, I've created something. It's a wonderful experience. Well, and it works really well. Any inspiration is by our guitarists? Say again, sorry. Any musicians in particular you, uh, that inspires you? Oh, well, that could be an hour-long podcast in itself, to be honest. Um, no, this is pick one. Or guitarist, I would say David Gilmore from Pink Floyd, or, um, or Wes Montgomery, who's a jazz guitarist. Um, oh, gosh, they're so Joe Pass, another jazz guitarist. I think it's kind of fabulous. Um, as for bands, I'm very eclectic. I'm really revisiting a lot of tom waits at the moment he was very difficult to listen to because of his voice but the music itself is quite marked um if you can imagine a cross between uh bob dylan and leonard cohen and then multiply it by about 10 that's tom waits voice um, <laughs> he's drunk a yes. lot of whiskey, smoked a lot of cigarettes in his life but right. uh, but yeah I, I any music i'm very eclectic in my taste but it's, again it's just something that speaks to me that's what it comes down to lyrically and musically just something that is not yeah just something that just speaks to me that actually worked on it and it's yeah it inspires me oh thank you for sharing and on that note i think we will end up the podcast because it's a good note to end on well, i'm uh, going to just interrupt you actually because i want to know what music you listen to as well i'm sure that me the listeners sh- want to as well yeah <laughs> let's see for guitarists i like hendrix so fabulous yeah, yeah. that's yeah. my that's my guy. I did put Clapton on into the because of the inspiration thing. I did put Clapton. But to be honest, I'm more of the spoken word man. I do like podcasts. Mm. And unfortunately, I had to tune into a lot of politics podcasts in the last four years. Yeah. Trying to wean myself off of that. But yeah, I like the spoken I like audiobooks a lot because yeah, yes, I learn learn all the time. I try to learn. Absolutely. On that point, don't forget we've got a book club at Heart of England as well, and we've just had yes, we uh, one of Warwick uh, have just joined us, and we've got uh, Asma, who's the division director from Walsall. She's uh, a member as well. So uh, uh, all our listening members get in touch, and we'll get you reading more as well, and indeed listening to because I listen to audio books all the time, and it's it is great. Yeah. Well, there it's yeah. Now that's we'll really- add out a little about you as well. <laughs> Ah, that's why you're the. That's why you're going to be a director. No, I think we'd like to thank you for this year as uh, our president. I think you did a, a really good job. Right. And in the circumstances, we're able to provide a really cool service to everybody. I think you will also excel in your as an area director, and we'll probably get you back on a podcast to see how that goes sometime in the next year. Thank you, and thanks. Thanks for your help on the committee. It's been great fun. Absolutely. So once again, my name is Pierre. We had Rich as our president. So come to our meetings the first and third Tuesday of the month at 7.30. For all details, please go to heartspeakers.org.uk. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.